was on the way to the studio having a, a nice, quiet morning. You know how I like to start my day. I get a, a cup of coffee. I listen to uh, classical radio, really, really get myself calm and centered. And the beautiful, saintly, serene peace of my neighborhood was violently disrupted by the booming bass music from a car that pulled up next to me. Uh, just the loudest hip-hop I have ever heard totally destroyed my peace of mind that I had so carefully cultivated. And I just gotta say, uh, they love their music loud, don't they? Y you know, I heard somewhere that real G's move in silence, but uh, the ones around here seem to want the whole neighborhood to know they're coming. All right. That's going to do it for another Your Superman podcast. And remember, it's not a bird. It's not a plane. It's your manhood. Of course, you'll get no argument from me on that. Absolutely. Right. That's been my mantra from day one. Ultimately, it's about allyship, right? And it's going to take a groundswell of support that's not just community-based. Meredith, we talked about this just last night. Some of our partners are really going to have to recognize their privilege in all of this and then move from a place of awareness of it. Leah, I completely agree with you. But I'm going to push back on that last point you made where you said that we should be focusing exclusively on spending. Right. Because the issues facing our black and brown communities are not just economic, as we know. Right. And that's going to require really intentional work on the ground. We expect to see a lot of opposition from the right on this one. Because this is an issue they really care about. It's one of their non-negotiables. Saturday, I expect to get some of the major networks involved and turn this into a story. Then we can start to say we have some leverage heading into the runoff. Right. Well, you can take care of that next week. Okay. Well, good talk, you guys. I'm excited. All right. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. All right. Bye. dresser drawer with like a distressed cobalt green paint. I need it in my life. No, yeah, she's really sweet. I like her. It's given me a lot of time for self-care, self-reflection. I'm going to take a shower, but I should be there around 1.30. Okay.
some of our partners are really gonna have to recognize their privilege in all of this and then move from a place of awareness of it. <laughs> All right, I should be back around six. I'll talk to you. Okay, I love you. I love you too. Mm. Oh, don't forget the cotton swabs. Can you not look at me like that, please? I'm sorry? Yeah, can you not look at me like that? I can feel your look. I wasn't looking at you. Um, you were. It's pretty rude. Not to mention bigoted. Okay. Someone help us, we're trapped in here! Yeah, 
guess. We're stuck in an elevator. 522 Ocean Park Drive. 30 minutes? Okay. So, should I wait on the phone or? Okay. Well, can you please hurry? Thank you. I really appreciate it. What they say? It said 30 minutes. Police or fire department? It was emergency. Okay, so they should be calling the fire department then. I imagine so. Okay, is that attitude necessary? I wasn't... Wait, what are you doing? Oh, what am I doing? Okay, let's just... Let's just maintain social distance, okay? <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah, let's laugh. Let's all laugh about it. Because I'm that guy, right? That's what you're thinking? Um, yeah. Currently I am. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Let's just say you're on an elevator with a black woman. That's for sure. That's for sure. And you said it yourself. Men some white guy making that kind of generalization. I... I almost don't have to imagine. I'm sorry, can I... May I ask what you were implying by that last comment? I got the Pfizer. I'm not gonna sit around in a trapped elevator with this thing on. I'll die of anxiety before I get COVID. Did you get the vaccine? I did get the vaccine, yes. Then we're good. I just wonder what that last comment was about. I swear racism is backwards these days. People judge you for not being racist. That's how fucking backwards everything is. And no offense, that's thanks to people like you. People like me? Alright, I wasn't gonna do this. It's because of people like me that you get to stroll around this quiet little neighborhood with your little friend back there. People like me fought for your right to do that. Oh, it comes out. Finally, thank you for exposing yourself. It was people like you in the 60s that told the Freedom Riders not to rock the boat. That told Stokely Carmichael and Angela Davis Riders. not to start shit. Do you think you'd have your little situation today if they listened back then? But that's the whole point though, isn't it? That's the whole point. You should be happy I exist. I'm proof you won, right? I honestly don't care what you do. It is so not my concern. So it doesn't bother you in the least that this guy right here is a conservative. Yes, it doesn't bother you even a little bit that I fundamentally disagree with everything you stand for politically. Yeah, let's pretend that you have any clue what my politics are. It's so obvious. It's so obvious you're wearing your politics around your neck. I cannot tell you how unlike me all that is. Regardless though, you should be proud some of us don't have to dwell on our identities 24 hours a goddamn day. Wasn't that the dream? Or is that just for white people? Do you like rap? Oh, do you listen to rap music? Yeah. Who's your favorite rapper? Why? Lil Peep. Lil Peep. Is there a point to this? I just find it fascinating 
how popular it is, like globally. When you think about it, it has the hugest following. Like no other genre comes close. Even K-pop is just some variation of hip hop and R&B, right? <laughs> and in some of the most homogenous parts of the world where you would be hard pressed to encounter a single black face on a given day. But it has so many fans now that even racists like it. And they see the artist's skin color as almost an inconvenience. <laughs> it's schizophrenic, right? It's like they resent their own attraction to the music. That's ridiculous. Remember those Ivy League hip hop parties where everyone was like in blackface? What do you think that was about? It's the only genre of music where someone like Cardi B might not get into a party that's playing her own music. Just ponder that for a moment. That, that's absurd. See, that's exactly the kind of it's not fair for me in society bullshit that's paralyzed the black community for so many generations. And every generation keeps benefiting. You sit back, watch me get in the mud, do all the grunt work. Criticize me for bringing up shit that needs to be changed. But you clearly don't mind reaping the benefits, do you? How do I benefit? Please tell me. <laughs> well, it's perfect that you don't know. You are so obvious. And they say you shouldn't assume things about people. And what do you do when the assumptions are so accurate? That's my question. Hello? We're trapped in here. Every fucking black movie has to be about race. Wonder where I have to thank for that. I assume that's all we think about. No, that's all they think about when they see us. Yeah, I definitely don't think about whatever the hell it says on my birth certificate. When you're fucking race like all hours of the day. What's that like? Can you tell me? You want to know what it's like to be black? Is that what you're asking me? I can speak for myself. I don't think about my race all that often, actually. No matter how many times they try to bring it to my attention with their cringy discomfort of seeing me in this space, mixed with the guilt of feeling uncomfortable in the first place. It's always comical. I'm comfortable with my race. You might even say I like it. Like I imagine someone might like their own freckles, maybe. But I certainly don't think about it like that. I guess that's how most humans regard their own race. I hope that satisfied your curiosity about what it's like to be black. Look, I'm me, all right? I'm myself. I don't feel like an imposter in this building. I don't have to fucking code switch. That's very nice for you. I'm sure the overseers felt the same way, old Steven. Isn't that like the desired outcome of all this activist shit? You, you shouldn't be punishing me for living the life you dream of for your kids. Yeah, I don't have kids. No, you don't consider every Deontay out there your child? Every Shiana or Briandria? I can almost guess what your name is. It's Milton. <laughs> yeah. 
That's right. It's a whole name. Not bits and pieces of names thrown together like fucking Legos. You're not supposed to freestyle your child's name. I mean, considering they have to carry it with them for the rest of their lives. Perhaps sit down and think it through, maybe? All you have to do these days is look at someone's name and it'll tell you all you need to know if their parents have the capacity for long-term planning. What's yours? I told you my name. It's Ruth. Okay, that name's not entirely suicidal. What? Yeah, certain names choose to carry them all the way through life, like willingly. It's basically social suicide. Or maybe social revolution? Why are you pressing your infants into revolution? God, reminds me of the fucking BLM mothers marching their three-year-olds directly into the tear gas smoke during the George Floyd riots. It's like, what are you doing? Wonder what those kids' names were. Okay, Milton. You know what's probably gonna happen? In about five years from now, all the racists will be gone. Mainly because they chose to skip the vaccine. But my point is, all that'll be left for you to complain about will be white people who, surprise, aren't racist. Or at least making an honest effort not to be. And POCs like me who see themselves as just people. Oh, I get it now. You thought we invented race. Honest mistake? Hey, listen. Activism's great. Black lives matter. Awesome. But who wants to carry that shit into their home every night? Into their private space where you should be able to hang up your fucking blackness in the closet right next to the LeBron jersey and just chill. Guess that makes me the super villain, right? Yeah. I'm the super villain. I'm the truth. I'm the light. You fucking birthed me. I'm your triumph. Your activism paid off. It did what the hell it was supposed to do. My identity can exist outside of my body. What a concept. It's almost supernatural, right? For instance, I like anime. I identify more with Goku than Tupac. Yeah, that's not an identity though. Oh, it's not? Pretty sure it's a cartoon character. And you're a Spartan. You ever see that movie? They built an entire culture based on war. You're very warlike. When you carry politics with you everywhere you go. Like everywhere, including your home. Like it's on your refrigerator door, in the bedroom, in the goddamn shower. It's like there's no peace. There's not a moment's peace. Like, be honest, you got that picture of Malcolm X peeking through the blinds with the machine gun, don't you? No, I peeked through the blinds myself. Why? Look at where you live. There's no way you identify with the streets. You are kidding yourself. You inhabit a completely different economic space. You indulge in luxuries, don't you? You luxuriate. You chose to live here because you can. They can't. They don't have that choice. Those people would literally risk death to live your life. They have no fucking idea what it's like. They can only imagine. 
which means they couldn't possibly relate to you. And by default, you can't relate to them as much as you might want to. You're not gonna trade places with them anytime soon, are you? Nope. You're just pretending. You're like that white chick that takes pictures with African kids so people can think she's a super cool human being. No. I'm the African kid. And I'm not gonna apologize for thriving. Do 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 do